Hi, welcome to my video on Divisi. Today I'm going to be answering a few questions that I get from fellow composers at university and elsewhere about the term Divisi. Uh, we're going to be looking at three main questions and I will elaborate on them in a moment, but these questions are as follows. First, what does it mean and what happens when a string section sees it in their part? Uh, I am Italian, obviously, if you couldn't tell, so I'm basically an expert in all the classic uh, terminology. Uh, additionally, I am a violist, so I can talk a bit about what happens to the orchestra when a section sees Debezi. Do they divide their part in some particular way? Is it consistent across orchestras, or even multiple sections in one orchestra? Do they not play any of the notes? Does the stage catch fire, forcing everybody to evacuate? We're going to find out. Second, how should Divisi be indicated in a score or part, and how should it be cancelled? Uh, this is where I see a lot of weird things from composers that aren't string players, and so I'm just going to spend a moment clearing that up. Okay, so question one. What does it mean? Divisi in Italian literally means divided. Okay, so basically Divisi is used when a composer wants a string section, like the first violins or the cellos, to effectively split into two sections. What this means is that half of the section will play a top note and the other half will play a bottom note. In some more complicated examples that we'll get into, we'll see that the halves of sections can play parts that are not only separate from each other in pitch, but also rhythmically independent from one another. So how is it decided who is going to do what? The two most common types of divisi are by person and by stand. Divisi by person means that the outside player of each stand, or the person on each stand that's closer to the front of the stage, will play the top note, in this case the C sharp, whereas the inside player will play the bottom note, in this case the B. Divisi by stand means that both players on the first stand will play the top note, both players on the second stand will play the bottom note, third the top, fourth the bottom, and so on. Another less common way that Divisi is done is by front and back halves of the section. So depending on how many stands you have, the front half of the section will play the top note and the back half will play the bottom. Uh, it's really important to note that if you are a composer, this is not your decision to make, and you don't need to micromanage what type of Divisi is used. This decision is usually up to the principal player or the conductor, and it varies from orchestra to orchestra, and can even vary from section to section in a single orchestra. Okay, so what if there are more than two notes in a particular divisi passage? Divisi of three or four notes is certainly a common thing, which are handled largely the same way, but amounts beyond that do exist as well. Here's an example of a Debussy six-part divisi, and you should know that when you get into numbers like this, this is something that orchestras take on a case-by-case -case basis. If you're wanting to divide your string section up into more irregular or higher numbers, it's important for you to know that each note might not be treated equally. This even goes for having Divisi in three, because there are most commonly an amount of players in a string section which is not a multiple of three, so the third note will likely receive one less player than the other two notes. If you're going into territory of five or six, I would advise following Debussy's example, as he's indicating that the section is six violins solely, meaning that even if there are more than six players in the first violins, which is highly likely for this piece, only the first six players are going to play here, and there will be no disproportionate treatment of notes. Another thing that I want to talk briefly about is the indication to play two or more notes non divisi which looks like this. This is most commonly used in passages that don't have demanding intervals to play as double stops, or when there are three or four note chords that the composer wants to hear rolled together as a section. Sometimes, even though the composer is implying a non divisi chord by writing a chord that is very idiomatic and easy to play as a triple or quadruple stop, the orchestra may still decide to play it divisi to get a quicker and more clean sound. So you can hear in this example that the orchestra is very likely playing this as a three-part divisi because of how quick and immediate the sound is. <laughs> Whereas in this example, you can hear the rolling of the chord, which takes slightly more time to do, and in this instance, is slightly more indulgent in the non divisi sound. I 
I would use this marking cautiously, as depending on the level of the orchestra you're writing for, you're taking a greater risk in intonation when having a whole section of people playing multiple stops. And depending on the notes themselves, it's more often than not unnecessary and just sort of annoying to be playing awkward double stops for a passage when it can just as easily be divided. Okay, question two. How should Debussy be marked? It's common nowadays in Western concert music to be more specific than not. And so while putting no marking at all over a string passage with two notes will likely result in a default response of outside player playing top and inside player playing bottom, I would suggest being more specific. Divisi is usually marked with the abbreviation div over the passage in question. Once the part goes back to playing one note at a time, the proper marking is an abbreviation of the word unisoni, which abbreviates to unis. If the two parts are more complex, this would warrant the splitting of a staff into two. This makes each individual part more readable for the players. Splitting a staff in a part doesn't mean that you need to split it in the score. In fact, I would avoid that unless the two parts are crossing over each other or if it just looks messy to keep it on one. So we're always looking to save space on the score if we can. Here's an example of something that I'll be splitting in a viola part, but not in the score. So as you can see, it's perfectly readable from the conductor's perspective because the conductor doesn't need to play the actual notes. Adding another viola staff really isn't going to save lives in the context of all of this. On the flip side of that, the splitting in the part helps the violist by turning the part into something that's kind of not super nice looking into something that's perfectly sight readable. If you are going to split the staff, it's not necessary to use the div marking because the section will know what to do. If you're going from a split staff back to a single staff, the unison is also implied and you don't need to mark that either. If you want something non div easy, the marking is non div, which you don't need to cancel if you're going back to unison because everybody is playing all the notes anyway, but you do need to mark div if you want to transition back from non div easy to div easy. Obviously, it's the 21st century, and the use of English is much more common than it was previously. I would still recommend using Italian for these, as string players already know what these words mean. Please do not invent your own terminology or way of indicating these things, as it is almost inevitable that using something vague that classically trained string players have never seen before is going to result in wasted rehearsal time with people asking questions about what your markings mean. It might seem like an obvious answer, there are only five sections in a string orchestra, and I want to write a chord that has more than five notes. Or I want to do some part writing that makes use of more than five sections, but I still want to retain a string timbre for all of those parts. Marking something as divisi, I allow myself to have more notes, and you certainly can't have too many notes, right? Too many notes, your majesty. Exactly, very well put. Too many notes. I don't understand. Obviously, using Divisi allows a composer to write more notes at a time, which can be very beneficial in many contexts, but it's a bit more nuanced than that. Divisi is the tool of an orchestrator, and many great orchestrators are very intentional with the decisions that they make when dividing a string section. The more you cut up a string orchestra, or an individual section of a string orchestra, the harder it is for each individual note to project. This isn't an issue for most contexts that are strings only, and usually isn't a problem in larger orchestral contexts that are just at a lower dynamic level. But adding more notes does not mean that you're adding more volume or more sound in general. Especially in situations where you're doing divisi in more than two notes, the support for projection that each individual note has decreases by a noticeable amount. So don't be tempted to create the thickest chord in the world, especially if there's brass and percussion going crazy on top of that, because your strings will be buried. Is that a threat, uncle? No, it's a fact. Now I want to clarify that that's not to say that strings that are divided cannot play like fortissimo. Um, obviously they can. All I'm saying is that you should be aware of the context that you're writing in and know that more notes does not equal more power. Okay, hi, so it's now almost two months into quarantine, um, which so two months after I, I recorded most of this video. And so I've just been editing it, getting it, kind of ready to release um, but the main thing that struck me throughout it was um, just how nitpicky it probably seems um, and that's because it is uh, but it's gonna go a long way for your players the people that you're writing for it's gonna go a long way for them to be reading things that don't make them have to look twice if that makes sense so just being consistent with the tradition you know that's not to say that you can't do anything new but for notational purposes um we're always you know trying to save rehearsal time trying to save space um and just trying to save any possible opportunity for confusion from from happening so yeah i mean i guess that's it but um this is kind of the first of these kind of string videos that i want to do i'm not sure what the rest are going to look like but i do want to do more of these types of videos so if you have uh, any feedback I, I'm not great at the editing and um, 
you know, the speaking in general. So uh, if you have any feedback, um, I'd love to hear it. Um, thanks for watching.